Hello friends, I am Amir Munazami and today we are going to study the bar problem using the finite element method that is the Galerkin method. So let's just start. So the Galerkin method is one of the method from the weighted residual method. So in the Galerkin method the choice of the weight function that is equal to the approximation of the function ni that is the same as the shape function. So, we know that for a bar problem, this is the bar and we we have this bar having the loading as P of X and the length is L. So, we know the governing equation of a bar that is A E, if A is the cross section area, is the Young's modulus D to U X by D X square equals to minus of P X. P X is the distributed load acting on it, this is shown here and u of x is the displacement that is throughout the displacement along the x axis this is the x axis and that is the displacement through the axial displacement so we can solve this problem this second order differential equation or governing equation of the bar one is the exact solution that is the closed form solution is also available for this simple bar problem and we can solve this by integrating the second order differential equation. This is the second order differential equation. So we can integrate it. We will get two constants when integrating the second order differential equations and we will apply the boundary conditions. That one of the boundary conditions we can say that at this position the displacement at x equals to zero is zero. Okay. And another we can say that the stress at this position is zero. So therefore we can apply the stress position zero. So we can solve this exact solution uh, that is the closed form solution by applying the boundary condition. Another is the approximate solution and that approximate solution can be solved by many methods and we will use the finite element method and in finite element method it is a weighted residual method where we use one of the weighted residual method is the Galerkin method. So now we know this is the governing differential equation a e d t u x by d x square that is equals to minus of p of x and we say that this is the equation one. Now for the solution we want u of x means our solution is nothing but u of x. We want the displacement u of x axial displacement because we are having the governing differential equation. So this is our solution and how we can get this? We have just talked that one of the method is exact solution by integrating equation one we can and applying the bodily condition for that constants we will get the exact solution. Another method is the approximate method that is the finite element method. Okay, Why we say that it is an approximate method because here we assume a function a displacement function and suppose here we assume a linear displacement function a naught plus a1 of x where it is a linear function of x. Okay, Another we can also assume a displacement function as a quadratic function a0 plus a1x plus a2x square. So in the linear it is a two noded displacement function node 1, node 2 and the displacement function is varying linearly. But here in the quadratic we will have three nodes 1, 2, 3 and our displacement function would be some quadratic variation. So here it will be displacement at this node 1 would be u1 and this node displacement at 2 is u2 and at this node u3. Now we can also have a cubic displacement function. So u of assumed displacement function is a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a3x cube. So here the, dis uh, the nodes would be 4. So at this position we will have 4 nodes. Okay. So that's why if we assume that we say that we can say that a e into d to u here it was u exact okay but here we can say that it is the assumed displacement function u assume of x upon dx square plus the loading function and we will say because we will just add this it is the exact solution when u of x we will get the exact one but here we are assuming so we know that if we are assuming we may have some error. So therefore, this 
function would not equal to zero exactly. Therefore, this would be the error which we say this is the error residual R of x. Okay, and that is nothing but same. Assume displacement function. Okay, d t u x by d x square plus u, and we say that if you will integrate through the element length and multiply with the weight function, is that should be equals to zero. This is the weighted residual method. This is nothing but weighted residual method. Weighted residual method. Residual method. And one of the residual method, weighted residual method, is the Galerkin method. We are where we know that this weight function is nothing but the approximation function that is the shape function of itself so therefore we will replace the weight function with the shape function or approximation function and we will integrate through the length and we will equate with the zero now that is the same r into ni of dx that should be equal to zero therefore we know the residual is E a d t u x by d x square plus p of x, which is the loading function distributed load axially, and n i is nothing but the shape function i x shape function where i is equals to i varies from one to number of nodes global nodes of the element. Okay, i number of nodes of the element not global. Sorry, these are nodes of the Element. If it is a two-noded element, linear element, then node one, node two, it will i would be one and two. And if it would be cubic or quadratic, three-noded element, then i would vary from one to three, so on. Okay. So it would have the three equations. Now, further we will move and we will integrate zero to l e a d t u by d x square n i. U, it is the approximate U, but we will now write as the same as U of x simply. Okay, so E A D T U by D X square into N I D X that should be equals to. We are just taking this in the right hand side, okay, and we will say minus of zero to L P X N I D X. Now applying the integration by parts for the left hand side of the equation two means this is the equation two, and we will just integrate in by parts on this. So we are getting one of the boundary conditions and another as this value. So this we can say minus of this equals to minus of this. Therefore, just cancelling the minus sign from both sides. Okay. So we are having minus e a zero to l e d n one by d x d n i by d x d u by d x integration and this. Now. Finally, we will write this equation: zero to any e a d d u by d x d n i by d x integrating with d x equals to this. So shape functions. Now we will know that if we are using the linear shape function, it is our linear shape function node one and node two. Therefore, the displacement at node one would be u one and node two would be u two, and the variation in between the nodes in the In between the two nodes of this displacement would be a naught plus a one x. Okay, so we can solve this linear equations at at x equals to x one means at this node one. What we have a naught plus a one into x equals to x one. We will replace it, and that should be equals to the displacement of node at one u one. Similarly, u at x equals to x two. Which is nothing but a naught plus a one x two, and that nodal displacement will be u two. So we are putting here u two. Now we will solve this, and we will get a naught and a one. Two equations, two and one. We will get a naught and a one, and we will further replace this a naught and a one by putting in this equation a naught plus a one x. So now we will just take the coefficients and of u one and u two, and we will get this x two minus x upon l e. And x minus x1 upon le, which is nothing but the shape functions n1x and n2x, and u1 and u2 is independent of x. It is the nodal displacements. So here we can see 
this is the assumed displacement function and what we are getting n1x into u1 plus n2x into u2 where n1x and n2x is nothing but the shape function n and u1 u2 is the displacement function nodal displacement so u1 and u2 is the nodal displacement that is constant and it is independent of x while n1x and n2x is nothing but the shear functions at node 1 and 2 respectively where any shear functions at its own position is equals to 1 and otherwise it's zero so now if we have u of x as this then derivative of that function du by dx would be nothing but dn1 x by dx u1 plus dn2 x by dx u2 so therefore we can write it like this okay now we will substitute this back in the equation for and what was the equation for you can see this was our equation for okay so we will write back du by dx and dni by dx so du by dx is nothing but this one du by dx is nothing but now this we will replace and get this value so here in equation 4 du by dx is replaced with the this value dni by dx dn1 by dx dn2 by dx and u1 this is the u by dx and then dni by dx integral dx then further we know that this is a constant value so we can take it outside the integration so we kept it outside the integration and this is inside okay now element stiffness matrix this is nothing but the integration will give the element stiffness matrix ke and this is nothing but a nodal displacement ue and this is nothing but the nodal forces due to distributed loads fe so therefore we get at ke into ue equals to fe ku equals to f we know that okay now for linear elements that is the two noded elements okay one node and two node we have we know that each node has one degrees of freedom here u1 and this also u2 okay so therefore i equals to 1 for first node we will get one equation and for i equals to 2 we will solve another equation therefore we will get the stiffness matrix as ea by le 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 so now element stiffness versus matrix versus the global stiffness matrix basically we have the stiffness matrix of the element that is ke we are having we have solved it now we now have to make the global stiffness matrix using this element stiffness matrix okay if we have the element stiffness matrix we can then make the global stiffness matrix okay by using the element stiffness matrix ke we can make the kg matrix that is the global for the entire structure for obtaining the solution because if we want to obtain the solution we must have the global stiffness matrix so therefore how we can get the global stiffness matrix by summation of the all the elemental stiffness matrix but this summation of the elemental stiffness matrix have a very good assembly weight okay we have to assemble it in a very nice manner so therefore the adding the stiffness coefficients of the element stiffness matrix to the global stiffness matrix based on their degrees of freedom okay so now we will understand how to do it so if we have suppose there is a bar okay if there is a bar and we have node 1 node 2 node 3 node 4 this is element 1 element 2 element 3 so we are having three elements which i have shown here 1 2 3 4 is the node and this is the element 1 element 2 and element 3 okay so if the number of element is 3 then number of node is number of node is one more than number of elements in elements plus 1 okay if it would be two elements then the number of node would be 3 if it is three elements then the number of node would be 4 so it's simply number of elements plus 1 that would be the number of nodes 
okay that is the global nodes of the bar okay so for bar 1 for bar means we are going to see the element 1 okay that is node 1 is having the displacement u1 and node 2 is having the nodal displacement u2 so therefore each node has 1 degrees of freedom therefore each element has two node therefore two degrees of freedom for each element okay now for this element 1 this element 1 we are having u1 and u2 as displacement nodal displacement therefore the element 1 stiffness matrix would be a by l1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 where the nodal displacement is u1 u2 okay now for the element 2 you will see that it is the nodal displacement global node is 2 and 3 okay so therefore the displacement would be u2 and u3 so corresponding to that you will get the element stiffness matrix 2 a by l2 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 at u2 u3 and similarly we will get the third element nodal stiffness matrix for this at u3 and u4 therefore if we will assemble and if we know that this is the global stiffness matrix so the size of the global stiffness matrix is having the same as global degrees of freedom so global degrees of freedom refer here as the global number of nodes is 1 2 3 4 4 global number of nodes and each node is having 1 degrees of freedom therefore global degrees of freedom would be 4 comma 4 for this okay so now we will to get the global stiffness matrix we sum up the elemental stiffness matrix okay at its corresponding de degrees of freedom so therefore we will name it kg1 kg2 kg3 and we will assemble each of them okay so in the uh, coding we have this elemental stiffness matrix at position u1 u2 means node 1 node 2 okay and then it would get filled at this position because of this then we have u2 u3 means node 2 and then node 3 then again now this element stiffness matrix would get come to node 2 and 3 okay it is 1 2 3 4 therefore it would come to 2 and 3 so 1 2 3 4 it would come to 2 3 so you will see it would get added 200 plus 200 would be 400 it's here then at this position this position this position it would get added again it would be u3 u4 u3 u4 so 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 u2 u3 u4 so it is u3 u4 so here it would be finally so in this manner each steps sum of the stiffness matrix of the element now we will have the length of a bar problem where the length of the bar is given as 3 meter and then the distributed load is 2.5x newton per meter e modulus of elasticity is 1000 newton per meter square and the cross section area is 0.2 meter square it asks to find the exact solution that is displacement and stress distribution and then the second problem is nodal displacement we have to find out in the stress within each element if bar is modeled using three linear elements two nodal three linear elements and then compare the exact and finite element solution so we will now write a code in the mathematica to see this <laughs> now we'll write the code 
so here we are having the material properties pm that is 1000 cross section area length distributed load and that is we are assigning that is p as p distributed is p and ea is nothing but pm into a is ea so for one dimensional linear elements we are asked to have three elements okay then we know that number of nodes is nothing but number of elements plus one therefore length of each element this is el is nothing but length of each elements now we will write the coordinate okay or we will write it l coordinate that is nothing but equal to we will make a table pl into i such that I am a zero to in nodes minus one. Let's see what this gives. So this is the coordinate zero, one, two, three. Okay. So the length of the element is 3 and each element length you can also see 1 what is the each element length again running each element length is 1 okay so therefore the coordinate would be 0 1 2 and 3 would be the coordinate okay now we will assign the global resistance matrix size okay so that is we will write table okay what we want 0 comma you know that the global resistance matrix would be nothing but the degrees of freedom, global degrees of freedom. That would be the number of nodes into each node having the degrees of freedom. That is 1, therefore it will be nothing but equals to number of nodes only. And that would vary from ii, comma, 1, comma, number of nodes. The same as jj, comma, 1, comma, number of nodes. Okay. Now we will assign Fn forces as again that will be similar way but it will be a vector not a matrix therefore we can remove this portion. Okay. Now, we have the linear displacement function, okay, so we can say displacement approximation, approximation for linear elements, two noted elements, linear elements. Elements. Okay. What we can say u, sorry, u approx that is equals to a naught plus 
a1 into x now if you want to solve this you can write it as equation 1 that is nothing but we will solve this u approx at having values of x x as we can assign them simply right l is equals to l called so it would be easy to write L again and again, L of 1, okay, for the first element, for the first node, sorry. And then we we'll copy this for the node 2, equation 2 would be u approx at L two second coordinates. Okay, then we will solve okay. So we will solve the equation in the unknown. So what's the equation? We are having equation one that should be equal to u1 because that u at x equals to 1 array u1 and comma equation 2 that should be equal equal to u2 and we know that we are having two constants a0 and a1 so therefore we want to solve for a0 and a1 okay so we will get this not in a1 so let's see what is the value so we are going getting 0 plus 1 u1 0 minus 1 u1 plus 1 u2 so this would be the a not and a1 value this two okay now moving further if we want to find the shear functions we know that the coefficient of u1 and u2 will give the shear functions so coefficient okay of u approx okay comma u1 I think we should get the shape functions 1 minus x or 1x this would be the shape function 1 similarly we will get the shape function 2 into for the coefficient of u2 we will get the second shape function 1x ok now further we can write n i that is the n matrix or that would be nothing but equal n1 comma n2 then we can also write dni dx derivative of the shape functions which is nothing but derivative of ni sorry should keep it inside ni with respect to x that will give the dni by dx derivative of that now if we get the shape functions then we know that we can find the element stiffness matrix element stiffness matrix 
this mesh matrix okay and you can see from the powerpoint that what was our stiffness matrix element stiffness matrix to get i equals to 1 i equals to 2 node 1 node 2 we will have to have ea into this ni dni by dx into d one by dx into this this will give our, us up the stiffness element stiffness matrix so for that we will just go to our problem and we will write the element stiffness matrix ke and that's nothing but integrate integrate okay what we have to integrate we have to have this ea and this dn1 by dx dn2 by dx we are writing nothing but dni dx so integrating ea into d n i d x into d n i d x at i okay that may be one two depending on the node we are working comma x comma l that will be one two l that will be two okay so that is the we run this expression i cannot be used as a part okay so we have not defined yet i so therefore we will write here for this i as i will be comma 1 comma and we will do one thing more here we will write a table okay so that it will include this now we can run it so we will get the stiffness matrix element stiffness matrix we are getting okay now we will go for the nodal forces nodal forces let's see how we can find the nodal forces You know F E, that would be nothing, but in the same fashion, here we we'll just copy it. Integrating, what we have to integrate here, we are integrating. We have to remove it. Instead of that, N I only, that is a shear function, and that should be multiplied by P. Okay, that is the P, which is our distributed load here. P distributed 2.5 times x1, which is our small x. Okay, so it is a x. Okay, now that x would be integrated from 
one to coordinate two and i from one to two. So let's see. Then, okay, this would be our nodal forces. This will be the nodal force. Now we will go for the assembly. Okay, so for assembly means for the different elements. So for element one, element two, element three. So right now we have done for one element only. Okay, and now if we want to have the assembly part, then we have to see very carefully now. Assembly. How to assemble the matrix? Okay. So our global stiffness matrix. Okay. One, comma one. That is nothing but equal to. We'll just have Ke. Element stiffness matrix one comma one. Okay, one 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 two one two two one two one then. Two, two. This will be two, two. Let's see what we are getting now. If you want to get print, sorry, sorry. You want. Global stiffness matrix Kg. Let's see what's the outcome. And if you want to say it as a matrix form, matrix. So we are getting this. 200 minus 200 at this position. Okay, one, two, three, four is empty because for the only one element, it is just taking care. Okay, but what to do now? Because we have only for one element we have applied, so we have to apply the loop for that. Okay, so from here we will apply the loop, and that would be. For each element, we will apply the loop. Therefore, for sorry, I one that is equals to one comma I one that should be less than equal to number of Elements, comma, I one is plus, and then it would end. This loop would end when it would complete the. This is the matrix and the nodal forces also. So we have the global stiffness matrix. Then we will have global nodal force F n one equal F e one. Equal to Have 
to this two. So after this, we will have to end the loop what we have applied yet. Okay. I want this print kg inside right now. Let's see what why we have in this. Now this we have applied for each element. Okay. So what we have to replace here? Because equation one, when we are applying for the displacement one, it is then taking the coordinate of first and second. But now for each element, element one would have node one and two coordinate, first coordinate and second coordinate. But for the element two, the node would be two and three. Therefore, the coordinate for second node and third node. So therefore, we can see that it would be i one, and for this. I two we can write I one plus one. Okay. Then for the third node and fourth node, it's third element, fourth element, it will go on like this. Okay. Okay. Now here we can again see that X would be from I one to I one plus one. Similarly, this will be I one to I one plus one. Okay. Now here, we have to change this global or elemental stiffness matrix. So we know that the element stiffness matrix is having the size two by two, so there can't be changed. But this we can replace as I one, comma I one. Here, this I one, and this two can be replaced with I one plus one. Similarly, this would be I one plus one, and this would be I one. Okay, and this would be I one plus. One. It will be I one plus one. So let's see. I will be up getting the right. Okay. So we have to do one thing because it is applying the loop again and again. Therefore, we have to clear those function. Okay. Clear. Clear. A not, comma A one, comma equation one, comma equation two, comma. Now let's see. Okay. So now we are getting K G. In this new, but we are seeing that it's not getting added. Okay, it's replacing at the value, but it's not getting added. Why? Because we have to make this thing that we have to add the previous stored value to that position. We will just. And this, okay. This, this, okay. Similarly, this nodal force. Sorry, it is here. It should be I one for the first node, and then. It would be I one plus one, so it will get added for the previous value to take into account. Similarly, this now we will see. So now we can see 
the stiffness matrix here it's 400 it's getting added with the previous values okay now we will solve for the boundary conditions we will apply the boundary conditions okay boundary conditions So we know that the boundary conditions we apply for the displacement as at the initial node we are having our displacement because our problem we, we saw there in our problem we are We are having our problem. This okay. We are just distributed. Sorry. Okay. This is our distributed force. So at this node, we are having the displacement as the boundary condition u at x equals to 0 would be 0 displacement. Okay. So this would be the our first boundary condition. So we will apply the boundary condition there and then we will solve. So I have already made this here, the same thing. So we will apply the boundary conditions. Up to this we have done. Now we will apply the boundary conditions and we will write job. Okay. Because the first if you are solving the equation, you will job that stiffness matrix, global stiffness matrix corresponding to that displacement where it is zero. Okay. Similarly, the force boundary conditions will also get dropped for that first position and we will solve the displacement function as linear solve this value kg bc and fnbc and then we will apply the command displacement function where we have removed zero values initially so now we will insert that in the displacement function and now we will have determining the approximation functions that is we approx and we will write this for the finite element solution, we will get piecewise for the approximate displacement and the exact solution we are having the differential equations A dtv by dx square plus p and we will solve this for the u0 that is equal to 0 and a strain because the stress is zero means a strain is zero at that position therefore we will get the exact solution at that position now we will plot and compare so we will apply let's see we are having this the blue is exact solution and this is the finite element solution and this is for the three elements we are seeing and this is for the stress the stress where the stress we are knowing the strain is a constant value therefore the stress would also be having a constant value that would be a jump okay so if we increase the number of elements suppose here we are using three elements if we take 10 elements let's say what would be the results now we will see for 10 elements we are seeing that the exact solution and the finite element solution is the same for the displacement function. But for the stress, there is the jump, but a better results from before. Okay. So now we can say that if the number of elements are increasing, we are getting a much better results. So today we have done for the linear elements 
uh, using a linear elements we have solved the bar problem in the next class we will try to solve for the quadratic elements thank you